So my name is Bruce Campbell, neurologist at the Royal Melbourne Hospital, University of Melbourne in Australia. I've just presented the Extend IA results, which is a randomised trial that we did as an investigator initiated study across 14 centres in Australia and New Zealand. The idea was that we were testing the uh, effectiveness of the stent thrombectomy procedure with the Solitaire FR device. Um, these were patients that were having TPA within four and a half hours of stroke onset and they were randomised 50-50 to receive TPA plus Solitaire clot retrieval or just TPA alone within six hours of stroke onset to groin puncture. The study showed that uh, reperfusion was dramatically increased in these 70 patients that we recruited and uh, the uh, median percentage of reperfusion at 24 hours was 100% in the endovascular group compared to 37% in the TPA only group. If you translate that to a more dichotomous reperfusion outcome of greater than 90% reperfusion, that occurred in 89% of the clot retrieval uh, stent thrombectomy patients compared to 34% of the TPA only patients. So there's a major increase in reperfusion effectiveness with this device. Now one of the key things about Extend IA was that we used advanced imaging with CT perfusion to identify patients who had the best chance of responding clinically to reperfusion. So we used the automated rapid software which was developed at Stanford University. This was applied at all these sites and uh, patients had to have a mismatch between the uh, perfusion lesion and the estimated core uh, and also a core volume of less than 70 mils to be eligible for the study. So they all had vessel occlusions in the middle cerebral artery or internal carotid artery. They had this mismatch, they had a core volume less than 70 mils and we hypothesised that that would be an excellent group to test a reperfusion therapy in terms of response. So as well as reperfusion, the other co-primary outcome we were looking at was early neurological recovery, which we assessed using the NIH stroke scale at day three. So the number of patients who had an eight point reduction in NIH stroke scale or reaching zero one between baseline and, and day three was 80% in the uh, TPA plus stent thrombectomy arm versus 37% in the TPA only arm. Again, highly statistically significant result. And that translated on when you look at the modified Rankin scale at 90 days, um, to a 71% uh, rate of modified Rankin 0 2, so an independent outcome, 71% in the stent thrombectomy arm versus 40% uh, in the TPA only arm. Again, highly statistically significant. You can look at the Rankin scale in an ordinal fashion, and uh, again, highly statistically significant uh, improvement in Rankin scales across the, the, the range. So overall a very positive study, there was also a reduction in infarct growth and uh, obviously improved recanalization with those initial reperfusion figures. So where does that leave us? Well we've just heard a number of studies which have now really confirmed stent thrombectomy as uh, the standard of care for patients with a major vessel occlusion in ischemic stroke and I think now the challenge is to implement that. So with Mr. Clean, obviously the rate of good outcome was 33%. That's now up in the 60-70% range. Um, the patient selection is clearly important. The device efficacy is clearly important and uh, treating patients fast is, is very important. So, you know, around the world there are number of already existing endovascular centres, places like where I live in Australia, we need to build capacity to deliver this therapy and we probably need to centralise our, our services a little bit as well to, uh, to maximise the impact of the, the new treatment. It really is a, a revolution in how we treat these patients with uh, large, large vessel ischemic stroke. Uh, transforms the outcomes as you can see from someone potentially being disabled, dead in a nursing home. Um, versus getting back to their independent function at home and managing all their, all their usual activities. So thank you for listening. It's been a, an exciting journey for the last few years doing this trial and uh, need to thank all the patients and their families that have participated in the trial.